Thank you for listening to American Medicine Today. I am joined by Ethan Euchre, and it's been nearly four years since President Trump took office, and our next guest has had enough of the left's countless lies and false accusations. And she's written about it in her new book. We're very excited to welcome Judge Janine Pirro to the show, host of Justice with Judge Janine on Fox News, and multiple New York Times bestselling author, whose latest book is called Don't Lie to Me and stop trying to steal our freedom. Thank you for joining us, Judge Janine. Thanks for having me. Of course. Now, Judge, always a lot to get into with limited time. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you your thoughts on the first presidential debate. It's reflective of the country that we live in right now. It's also reflective of the personality of the two men who are on this stage. And it also is reflective of a country where uh, you saw two men, one who was interested in answering questions, the other who was not interested in answering questions. So Joe Biden, when he was asked directly, would he pack the court, that he didn't want to make an issue of it, as if running for president, you should hide how you feel about issues that you'll be in a position of impacting. And then when he was asked for his list for the court, of course, he wasn't going to give that either. He wouldn't talk about the filibuster. I mean, since when do we have a debate? And the candidate says, no, I don't want to make an issue of it. He is representative of the most progressive leftist part of our Democrat Party that's looking to overturn this country in a way where capitalism is no longer longer the, the way of life. And uh, socialism takes over and a constitution doesn't matter where free speech is trampled by political correctness. We saw it during the pandemic. You can't practice your religion. You can buy weed, you can buy booze, but don't you dare go to church. Don't you dare go to synagogue. I mean, this is not the America that we bargained for. Everything is on the line right now. And I think that the debate was simply an example of a microcosm of what's going on in the country at large. Now, why do you think the left is so hell-bent on trying to get Trump out of the Oval Office. Trump represents something that we have never seen in the White House, and that is a true populist president who didn't come up through the ranks, who's not part of the back-slapping one hand washes the other establishment where everybody waits their turn. Donald Trump is the person who got in there when he didn't have to. I mean, the man's a billionaire from New York. This is the last thing he needed, but he saw the decline of the country. He saw what was happening to it, and so he said, you know what? I'm tired of the lies, and I'm tired of what's going on, and he's not part of any club. He didn't need any of them to get elected. All he needed was the American people, and that's who he got. And they haven't stopped their hissy fit from the day he was elected. In fact, Jim Comey and the FBI and Peter Strzok and all of them tried to coup on the uh, president of the United States, which is reminiscent of what happens in third world countries. I mean, it was they framed this man and what he's been through in the last three years and nine months is an outrage. It's an outrage to everyone. No one has gone through this. And he has shown us the kind of corruption that's gone on in the administration, in the Obama administration. You know, when he said, I think it was right in the beginning of January, he said, they wiretapped me. Everybody went, oh, Donald Trump is crazy. He's crazy. Well, I guess he was right, wasn't he? And then he said they were spying on my campaign. And Jim Comey comes out and says, I don't even know what that means. Well, I guess Donald Trump was right. So let's stop playing games. Well, let's put a man in there who believes in the American people, believes in the Constitution, believes in law and order, and isn't ready to dance around with the left as they try to take this country down and turn it into a socialist nation. Well, I still think it's interesting because President Trump had talked about Russian interference with Obama, and all Obama did was laugh it off. Well, he got away with it because his pals in the media were able to You know, they stood with him. When Obama sat there in that hot mic moment and said to Medvedev, tell Vlad I'll have more flexibility after the election. I mean, how much more do you really need? You know, I can't say it now, but after the election. But what did Russia do when Obama was there? Russia annexed Crimea. It took over a country. It invaded Ukraine. Did Obama do anything? No, he was riding on his bicycle with his helmet on. I mean, come on. It is so obvious what has gone on. And this president is all about America. He's all about working people. And I have known him for over 30 years. I know the man. He's not the caricature of what they make him out to be. He's an in-your-face New Yorker who means what he says and says what he means, as in Clinton, Bush, Obama. They all said, we're going to move the embassy to Jerusalem. Did any Mm -hmm. of them do it? No. But did Trump say it? Yes. Did he do it? Absolutely. He's a man of his word. And although we expect a certain amount of lies from politicians, 
that what's going on in this country is a danger. And if they keep trying to keep us in our home, open the borders, defund the police, take away our guns, I mean, we're in a mess. Oh, we certainly are. And the one thing Trump is not is a pandering fool. Now, we actually have a segment on our show called Trump's Triumphs. So because you've known President Trump so long, you might be great at just kind of laying out some of those triumphs. It's easy. He brought us the, the greatest economy this country has ever seen. He was a businessman, and everyone knew that he was capable of doing it. Promises like Jerusalem. And by the way, do you remember five, six years ago, we were all worried about ISIS and getting our heads chopped off, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, Obama says he didn't. He couldn't figure out whether he wanted to dismantle them, contain them, or defeat them, none of which he did. Uh, Trump comes in, he destroys the caliphate in the Middle East. Has anybody talked about that? You know, <laughs> Trump has done all kinds of things. You know, we had an African-American president. The best president to African-Americans has been Donald Trump. They had the lowest unemployment ever in the history of this nation with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And yet they want to call him a racist, which is just so absurd. And, you know, between the soaring economy and the and the, the, the employment and the jobs and the opportunity for people, the strengthening of the military, the support for law and order, the strengthening of the Veterans Administration, during Obama, people were putting off veterans who were dying as they waited for appointments. And they were they had some kind of system there where they got some extra pay if they said they moved the cases along, which they made up. I mean, it was just a fraudulent thing. And I could go on and on, but that's why I wrote the book. It's loaded with footnotes, don't lie to me. And I was on Law Review, and you know, I know how to do footnotes. If you ever get in a fight with someone, just go to my book and get the footnotes. <laughs> Shut them up because I'm tired of the lies. I'm tired of people lying to America. I mean, come on. It's, he's a Trojan horse. He is a Trojan horse for socialism. And when Kamala Harris two weeks ago talked about the Harris administration and Joe Biden the next day talked about the Harris administration, sometimes you really need to believe people when they tell us who they are. What's going on there? Why won't Joe Biden answer questions about packing the court? What's going on with this Harris administration? What is going on? And that's why, get the book, don't lie to me, I've got it all in there. And I said in my other books, Liars, Leakers, Liberals, Radicals, Resistance, and Revenge, Obama knew what was going on. Obama was part of this plot to take down Trump because he hated him. They were jealous yeah. of the man who didn't come up like the rest of them, doing deals and cutting all kinds of backroom deals for each other. I just think that this election will be an incredibly important one, and hopefully people will get out to vote and make sure that their vote counts. As President Trump had a mighty magic wand, well, all Biden has done is is just continue hiding in his basement. Thank you so much for being on, Judge Janine Perro. Thank, thank, thank you. you for telling us about your book. All right, Judge, thanks.